Apparently, most short-legged dogs develop this health problem at some point in their life. Sami has been walking like this for over a year now. I don't know if you'd call this a limp or a skip, but what he does is he lifts his left leg whenever he walks fast. We took him to the vet many times in the past year. We ran tests, we did a physical checkup, two x-rays, and nothing seemed to be wrong with his leg. We started doing some exercises at home to warm him up before walks. We started him on joint supplements just in case, but that didn't seem to help much either. In the meantime, his limp was constant and it wasn't getting any better. So two weeks ago, we decided to take the next step and do an MRI to take a closer look at what's going on. We finally discovered what the problem is and to be honest, it wasn't the good news we were hoping for. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you our experience, what we found out and what we're doing about it so that if your dog has these symptoms too, maybe they're dealing with the same health issue and I'm hoping that you're gonna find this video helpful. So let me start from the beginning. So when I first noticed Sami limping like this, he was only doing it every now and then. Um, and don't judge me for it, but initially we thought it was kind of cute, you know, like he's walking happy. Um, and only later when it started to become constant and he was doing it more often, um, I started to think that maybe this is a health problem. So I took him to the vet for a checkup. Um, I told the vet, look, he's doing this every few steps. Is this normal? Why is he doing it? And she checked for the most obvious things, you know, like maybe something was stuck between his uh, toes. Sometimes it happens that they get some grass weed or something like that stuck in there and it causes a, an infection and pain. Um, so it wasn't any of that. She checked for any wounds in his paws. She checked for uh, signs of a broken nail. It wasn't that either. Then she took a look at his knee um, because small dogs usually have this uh, condition that they can develop. It's called laxated patella. It's basically when the kneecap uh, pops out of place every now and then and that's when they limp. So the way that the vet checked for it is she bent his knee and did all kinds of movements just to check if the kneecap comes out or it stays put. And because it didn't move at all, she said that it's not luxated patella, his knee is perfect. So then the next thing on the list was to check for hip dysplasia, which is also another quite common condition for small dogs. So she rotated, rotated his leg, uh, she checked his hip. We did two x-rays at some point to check in more detail and everything was absolutely fine. His hip seemed fine which in theory is great news because that meant that everything was okay but at the same time you know it didn't explain the limping why was he still limping we got him started on joint supplements and because the vet said that whatever it is will either help or it won't do any harm they're pretty safe and he can take them long term so he's still taking the joint supplements but we still didn't see any kind of improvement Quite on the contrary, he actually started doing it more often. I have a video on my channel if you want to see that uh, in more detail, what we went through and what we checked. Um, it's called Why is my dog limping? And I'm gonna put it here and in the description of the video. So after all of these checkups, we still had no idea what was going on. Um, so we, we started to travel during that time of year and there was a, a long time when we didn't do anything about it. And at some point recently, I decided to do some more tests because I was honestly afraid that it might be something more serious, uh, like maybe something neurologic or I don't know. I don't know what it could be. So we took Sami to an orthopedist that our vet highly recommended. Um, I trust our vet very much. So I was happy that she sent us to, to someone that she knows and trusts. So we went for a checkup um, to a hospital nearby um, and the orthopedist checked, checked, basically did all the, the checks that our vet previously did, just more in detail. So he checked on Sami's uh, knees, hips, uh, his toes. He started to wiggle his toes to see um, his reflexes and stuff like that. Uh, he kept bending his legs and letting them drop to see how, how his reflexes are, basically. I'd never seen that before, so it was interesting. 
So he checked the way uh, the leg moves and all kinds of stuff. He checked for signs of discomfort when doing all these moves. Um, and everything was okay. Sami was just fine. No, no signs of discomfort. Then at some point he started uh, checking his back and he, he basically pushed on the vertebrae in his spinal column. So that's when Sami started to manifest discomfort and maybe even pain. At some point he was pushing on his lower back and Sami tried to get away, which he doesn't usually do. And he didn't cry or whine, but I was really close to him and you could hear that silent whine that dogs do when they have some kind of pain. You know, it was like a whispered cry that you can hear when you're up close. He was doing that and he kept trying to get away. Um, so it was clear immediately that the problem was in his spine. So I asked the doctor, what is that a sign of? What could it be? And he said, it could be one of two things. So one could be a hernia um, of, the, of the discs in the spine, or the second one could be like a ruptured ligament in his leg. Not a complete rupture of ligament because then he wouldn't be able to walk. He would be in, in really bad pain, but a possible injury like a fissure of the, of the ligament, which would explain the limping, but it would not explain the, the pain in his back. Either way, there was nothing much that he could tell based on just a physical uh, checkup. So he recommended we go ahead and do an MRI um, because that would uh, show exactly what's going on. So our orthopedist referred us to another doctor somewhere um, in another city because apparently we don't have an MRI machine in our city. Uh, we live in central Portugal, so we had to go somewhere up north uh, near Porto, if you know. Um, that's the only hospital with an MRI machine. It was about two hours away in driving distance, so it wasn't that bad. We booked the MRI. We were told that uh, Sami would have to be under complete anesthesia for this, so he couldn't eat anything the day of the procedure, so he couldn't have food or water, none of these. And we were told that it would take about three to four hours, so we would have to just sit and wait until it was ready. So we went, we left Sami there, we knew that he was in good hands. Um, I really liked the doctors there and everybody, they were super nice. Thankfully everything went well, they called us when the procedure was finished and they said that we should wait another hour or so, so that the anesthesia completely wears off. They said that they prefer to monitor the dogs as they wake up, because there can be some problems with the swallow reflex, um, as they are coming out of the drugs, um, there's a you know a small chance that they can choke on their saliva or something like that, and they prefer to keep Sami there until he's fully awake. Once Sami was awake, we could go pick him up. Uh, he was super excited to see us. Just look at this video. Um, he was just really, really excited, but I think he was also pretty cranky from the anesthesia, so he cried a little bit, which he rarely ever does. I think he was pretty uncomfortable being put under like that, you know, it's never fun, and he was probably a bit dehydrated and hungry too. The whole ride back home, I sat in the back with him to keep an eye on him and, you know, for him to know that I was there with him. He was pretty sleepy and spaced out, so he napped the whole way. Okay, so here's what we found out. After the MRI was done, the vet called us into his office and he sat with us to explain everything in super great detail. Um, so I'm gonna share with you exactly what he told us. So apparently Sami has what they call small disc protrusions um, in three of his discs in, in the spinal column. So what that means is that the discs between the vertebrae in the spinal column are slightly bulging up, pushing, uh, slightly pushing on the, on the nerves that go into the legs. Um, so that's why he's limping. Depending on the movement, um, these, these discs can push also into the marrow and that can cause pain. But based on um, observing Sami, the vet said that probably this is not happening yet. So here he's showing us exactly what the healthy normal discs in the spine look like. 
So normally there's a layer of gel and fat around each disc that creates a sort of a cushion around the discs and it protects them. And in the damaged discs, you can clearly see that that layer is um, a lot thinner and in some areas it's uh, almost completely gone. So that is why basically the disc pushes on the nerves and it pinches the nerves as Sami moves. So that also explains why Sami's not lifting his leg uh, when he walks slow or when he runs. He's only lifting the leg when he walks fast. Hi, look who came here. <laughs> so to continue, um, the vet said that uh, it's not something that we should worry about too much. Um, he said that it's normal with uh, dog breeds that have long bodies and short legs like the Westies. Um, and that it's, it's bound to happen at some point during their lives. Uh, most of the times, by the time you discover this, it's already in a later stage. But in Sami's case, um, it's, it's a very, it's basically just the beginning of a hernia. It's not, it's technically a hernia, but it's just um, a very, very early stage. The vet said that it's not operable at this time, so surgery is not an option. Um, he did say that it will get worse with age and that this is normal. He compared with humans as well and he said that with humans this happens as well as we age. So it's not something uh, serious, I guess. Um, also, the rate at which this gets worse depends on the lifestyle and how much we protect Sami um, on a daily basis. Like, it's not a good idea to have Sami jump on and off the furniture and stuff like that that I'm gonna tell you um, at the end of this video. Uh, so if we protect him um, on a daily basis that he, you know, the vet said that he's gonna have a very normal, long, happy life. One of the questions that I asked uh, was, was this our fault, basically? It, is, there, is there something that we could have done differently to stop this from happening? And the vet said no. He said that this is genetic and, you know, even if lifestyle does matter, uh, this would have happened eventually anyway. And there's nothing that we did wrong. So in case you're gonna go through this with your dog and you're wondering, um, rest assured that it wasn't your fault. But since there are a few things that we can do to help this going further, let's focus on that for now. So what can we do next? The first thing that the vet mentioned was avoid jumping um, on and off the furniture and uh, climbing stairs. So for that, we already have dog stairs that we use in our bedroom because our bed is quite high and I got these dog stairs last year sometime um, and Sami has been using them ever since. I think we're gonna get one for the sofa here in the living room as well because he loves to jump on and off it. Another thing that I really didn't like to hear was avoid the beach. So apparently um, all the running and walking in the dry sand is very bad for the back and the, the, the legs basically because it's an uneven surface and there's this movement that is not okay for the spine or for the hip or for the knee. So that is a little bit of a sore point because we love going to the beach uh, we live like half an hour from the ocean and we, we really love walks on the beach. But um, yeah, it's not good for him. The vet did say that it's okay for him to walk on the wet sand right on the shore. That's fine because it's hard sand and his legs don't do this. But avoid walking in the dry sand. So we're probably still gonna go to the beach, but I'm just gonna have to pick Sami up until we reach the, the shore and I'm only gonna let him run on the wet sand. The vet also said like, don't overdo it, you know, don't keep him in a glass bubble. Let him run, let him play, you know, exercise is really good for them, for their muscle tone and for their bones. So I guess I'm gonna be more careful about uh, certain movements like climbing and jumping and stuff like that that he's not supposed to be doing. Um, but I'm not gonna overprotect him. He needs to have his normal, happy dog life. One thing that I asked the vet because I wanted to know is, is he okay for long walks? 
because we travel quite a lot and we like to go for long walks like you know for a few hours so the vet said that long walks are fine just as long as he doesn't get too tired because when he gets tired the posture uh, changes so instead of walking like he normally would he's starting to have bad posture and that's bad for his spine so just you know have our long walks but i guess that when he gets a little bit tired i'm gonna get a pack backpack for dogs and just walk with him on my back or maybe just pick him up so next we're gonna start Sami off on some kind of treatment that is gonna help uh, with the nerve sensitivity and the possible pain that he might be feeling sometimes. And it's also gonna stop this from evolving uh, further or actually it's gonna slow down the evolution. In the meantime, we're maintaining the joint supplements that he's taking. Uh, the vet said that he can take these for life. They are safe and they are helping him. And the last thing that I want to look into is some kind of physiotherapy for dogs. Um, we've never done any, anything like that before because there was no need, but I know that it's really good for them. You know, it's just like with us humans, right? It's some kind of fitness is always good for the health. So I guess any kind of exercise will be good for Sami. It will strengthen the muscles in his back and his legs. So I'm just gonna need to find something um, in our city or in driving distance somewhere, I don't know. I saw on the internet that there are all these kinds of um, swimming therapy for dogs or um, a, a kind of a treadmill underwater that they can walk on. Yeah, so I think that would be really, really good for him. Uh, let me know in comments if you did this with your dog already and how is this working? Let me know if you found this video useful. Give it a thumbs up if you did and share it with other dog parents. If your dog has any of these symptoms too, leave me a comment and tell me. I'd love to hear your stories and if you have any tips or advice for us. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Take good care of your pups and give them a big kiss from us. And we'll see you in our next video. Bye.